I've never really talked about the FNAF spin-off games on this channel. I don't know if it's because they're not really canon or because I haven't played them all, but I just haven't. So after Dork Muffin, which is the best username I've ever seen, asked me to talk about the spin-offs, I finally decided I'd talk about them. I've decided that I'm going to rank every spin-off and troll game from worst to best. You might think it's unfair to compare the spin-offs with the troll games, but let's just say that not all spin-off games are treated equally anyway. Although the troll games are mostly just reskins of Scott's old games, I'm still just going to judge them as regular games. Also, FNAF AR will not be on this list. I've never played it before, and I was going to for this video, but when I tried to, Google Play said that my device couldn't play it. I looked it up, the minimum requirement for FNAF AR is Android version 7.0, and I have a 9.0, so I couldn't tell you what happened, but if I'm being honest, I really didn't care to play it anyway. The Ultimate Custom Night demo from a troll perspective is a 10 out of 10. However, it's not the best game. I don't want to be too harsh on this one because it's a reskin of Scott's very first game. Supposedly it was made in 1989, but I don't know if I can believe that. I know Scott's been making games for a surprising amount of time, but he was 11 years old in 1989. So, if that is the case, then man, he's he, he was already doing more than me. Anyway, this game just doesn't control well at all, and is quite nauseating to look at. It certainly has the pre-2000s computer game look. This game is old, and just a troll game, so let's just move on because there's clearly not a whole lot to talk about. You know what's sad about the FNAF World Halloween troll? It isn't much worse than FNAF World was on launch day. Just so you know, FNAF World on this list will be the latest version, that's why we haven't talked about it yet. The FNAF World Halloween Edition, despite being a troll, isn't really that bad. It's actually fairly similar to some of the more underground fan games. It's a really basic RPG with very little substance, but it, it at least takes a small bit of strategy. It's a very small bit, but it could have been easier. There's not much to say once again, so let's move on so I can get into the more exciting ones. I hadn't actually played Fury's Rage before making this video for whatever reason, and I must say, I, I was underwhelmed. I got really bored really quickly. I like a lot of arcade games and side-scrolling beat-em-ups, but this one just didn't capture the charm of that genre, nor the charm of the FNAF series. I like games with similar controls, like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, and I also like side-scrolling beat-em-ups like the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, but it, this just didn't have that excitement for me whatsoever. It has some humor, which I like, the opening scene with Scott is pretty amusing, and the art is great, there's no denying that but I just feel like this game could have been so much better. It didn't do anything to separate itself from every other beat-em-up game, whereas Scott's games generally have creativity to them. Although the format of Scott's games aren't always super innovative or anything, he's a really creative guy with some really imaginative ideas. This game just didn't grab my attention the same way as most others, and I couldn't have much fun with it. I honestly found the FNAF 3 troll game pretty fun. It's a basic unfair platformer that reminds me a lot of the Flash games from the early 2010s. Back in my earlier days of YouTube, I'd play games like Unfair Mario, Cat Mario, Sonic Unfair. So when this game pulled some of its bullshit trolls, I was able to prepare for it. Its physics are a bit shitty sometimes, and there are obviously moments that get boiled down to random chance, but I truly found this game fun. Again, it's pretty unfair a lot of the time, but I enjoyed figuring out the levels and testing my ability to time jumps. And you, it gives you a hundred lives, so it's not like it's... It's not like you have to repeat the first few levels over and over and over again. You know, if you get past a certain point, you know, you'll have some time to figure all your shit out. It might seem weird to put this one above Fury's Rage, but this one is honestly just more fun. Fury's Rage has great artwork and definitely more depth, but I just found it really boring. While this one was actually pretty enjoyable to me as someone that likes platformers and simple challenging games. I also love the way Freddy's head looks on Scott's little anima dude, or however the fuck you say that name. Again, this game is simplistic, but I honestly was able to have some fun with it. Sister Location Mature is a reskin of Scott's game Sit and Survive, I believe it's called. It's another troll, and in my opinion, it's Scott's best one. He claimed it was a version of Sister Location too mature to be on Steam. Uh, yeah, that's totally what this is. This is a game where you earn money each day. You use your money to purchase equipment to help you survive. You don't actually have any control during the day, you need to rely on what you've purchased. So the strategy goes into managing your money to use it on the correct equipment. There's some luck involved because you aren't told what the events of the next day will be, but if you play through the game once, you'll have a pretty good idea of what to expect the second time, and if you manage your money really well, you should be able to prepare yourself for the unknown most of the time. This is another simple game, but I honestly did enjoy it for quite some time. When the days start to get intense, you do really have to think about how you'll utilize your resources. 
Uh, just like every game we've talked about, it's basic and simple, but I really think this one is fun to figure out. Freddy in Space 2. This is another one that I hadn't played prior to making this video because I thought it was a bit too dumb. And it is, but so is everything on this list, so it's fine. Freddy in Space 2 is a really solid platformer with some decent puzzles and good mechanics. The boss fights are actually pretty challenging, and figuring out the secret pathways by breaking down certain walls is pretty fun. I enjoy the shooting mechanic and the various types of enemies, it's a shockingly good game. This game, in my opinion, has what Fury's Rage lacks. It has Scott's charm and imagination. It's fun, and the level designs are consistently nice. It takes quite a bit to make an original platformer nowadays, and Freddy in Space 2 did its best to be creative, and I think it turned out really good. After consistently doing FNAF content for a few months now, it's time for me to come out and say that I think FNAF World is really fucking fun. When it first came out, yeah, it was pretty dull and unappealing, and uh, bad. Just, just, it was straight up bad. But now that it's been updated quite a bit, I, I truly enjoy it. It's cute and fun, and if you know me, you know I'm a dumb baby that likes that kind of garbage. I actually did a reaction video to the announcement trailer for FNAF World in 2016, which is pretty hilarious. I was excited for it, despite it not being a new horror game. Uh, it's really silly and has a sense of humor, and I just find that enjoyable in the FNAF universe. I think the main line of games should absolutely be horror games, and the horror games are not topped by any spin-offs in my opinion, but I think some cuter takes on the universe can be fun. There's also a surprising amount of detail, there's a lot of endings and secrets, some of which are actually pretty dark and work their way into the main series. And again, like in Freddy in Space 2, this just has that charm that Scott's games generally have. There are so many creative designs, and there's so much variety in this world, and I honestly think Scott deserves some more credit in terms of how imaginative most of his creations are. As far as I'm concerned, I think FNAF World is the best spin-off game in this franchise, but of course, Freddy in Space 2 does have to be a very close second. So finally, those are my thoughts on the Five Nights at Freddy's spin-off games. What do you think of these games? Uh, I think games like FNAF World cause some of the greatest divides amongst fans, so I'm really curious as to what people will think of this video. What would you like me to talk about next? Should I dive into the horrific pit that is the FNAF books like Dork Muffin mentioned? Uh, should I talk about some fan games? Let me know. Actually, I already have a video for a specific fan game in mind, but let me know what you think I should do. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hit like and subscribe if you did enjoy. It helps out a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.